and we're live. Great. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Councillor James Pasternak. I'm the chair of the North York Community Council. The clerk has confirmed that we have quorum, so I'd like to now call meeting 19 in order. Welcome, everybody. And I'm assuming most had a late night. This meeting is being held on using the city's WebEx technology with members of council participating by video conference. City staff are also connecting to the meeting by video conference. The city hall remains closed. The public continues to participate electronically and can watch the meeting streaming live at YouTube at youtube.com backslash Toronto City Council live. Because we're meeting remotely, we ask for your patience in any delays or technical issues. Currently have registered people registered to speak who have been connected to the meeting by audio. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting North York Community Council page at toronto.ca backslash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. Before we begin, I want to remind you of the important health and safety measures that we all must follow. Attendance in the room is limited to only those persons who are required to be at the meeting. A number of clerks on your visual IT are with us today. Members, this is a paperless meeting. The city clerk has provided all agenda materials via CMP, the clerk's meeting portal, including any confidential matters. The clerk's IT staff will be available to both in-person and remote participants to help with your devices. I'd like to remind staff to keep their mics muted, put their videos turned off unless they need to answer questions or speak to the committee. This will make it easier for me as chair and for those watching on YouTube to observe members as they participate in the debate and vote on items. As part of each agenda item, I will ask members to raise their hand or unmute their mic if they wish to question staff or to speak. I will then create a speaker's list and we will call on members when it is their turn to speak. When voting on an item or motion, I ask the members to ensure that they turn on their video if applicable and to raise their hand to indicate their vote. To ensure that I see all members, I will ask that you keep your hands raised until I've reviewed all members. Members, I want to remind you that you must still submit and approve all the motions by email. Staff are available at nycc at toronto.ca to help with motions. If there are any visiting members of council attending the meeting today, I would encourage you to turn on your video so that I know that you are present and can give you the opportunity to ask questions of staff or speak. And this will assist the clerk staff to record attendance for the meeting. Although we were meeting for locations meeting remote. Only today, the Community Council would like to acknowledge being on as the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississauga of the Credit, the Ashwanabi, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by thir tre Treaty 13 with the Mississauga of the Credit. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? you have an interest, please raise your hand or unmute your mic and indicate the item. I see none. We need a motion to confirm the minutes from our last meeting on October the 7th, 2020. Moved by... So moved. Councillor Carroll, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. So I understand, um, well, we can run through the, we could run through the agenda and um, I know there's four items at the end, and we have lots of speakers on various various items. So we'll go to the untimed items. Um, NY 19.3 preliminary report zoning bylaw amendments and rental housing demolition applications on Young Street. Councillor Cole, uh, how would you like to proceed? Yes. Uh, which item is that again? 19.3. Uh, 19.3, okay, I'm just trying to pull that up to make sure I got the right one. Yeah, this... Uh, just a consultation, uh, public consultation. Yeah, yeah, just the one, the, this is the old Truel Funeral Home on Young Street. Yeah, okay, just one minor amendment that the, uh, the uh, consultation area be extended from 120 meters to uh, 500 meters, that's all I'm... Uh, Okay, so I understand we no longer need formal motions uh, for that at Community Council, and you can take, speak to staff and do an undertaking offline on that. Is that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
Okay, so would you like to move the preliminary report? I'll it's move just the approving. Uh, I'll, remove, I'll move the preliminary report uh, with that undertaking with staff that I'll do offline about the extension to 500 meters. Okay, great. 19-3, uh, um, preliminary report. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. 19-4, preliminary report. Uh, zoning bylaw amendment, draft plan subdivision for ed various addresses on Bayview Avenue. It is uh, Councillor Robinson. I'd be happy to move it on her behalf. It's really to authorize a community consultation. Sorry to interrupt, Councillor Pasternak. There's speakers on that item. For preliminary report. Um, thank you for advising me. You are correct. There are speakers on the item. Uh, hold it. Item number five, also speakers. I will hold that item. Uh, item six, also speakers. We'll hold that item. Item number seven, um, construction staging area, Fairbank Avenue, 1924-1928 um, Eglinton Avenue West, Councillor Cole. Uh, yes, uh, I'll uh, move the uh, report. And again, I'm gonna do an undertaking with staff about uh, routine cleanup of the street uh, of Fairbank uh, as construction proceeds. So I'll uh, do that with staff. Okay, that's great. Um, Great, so you're moving the recommendations? Yes, I move the um, recommendations. All, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Item number um, seven, number eight. Um, Safety review, short-term improvement, Keel Street in Calvinton. I'll hold that down. I'd just like to um, ask a few questions of staff. Nineteen nine. Always stop control. Ponce and Senlac Avenue. Councillor Fillion. I'll move that. Authorization for always stop is moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item number 10, designation of various fire routes. Um, Ward 6, 8, 16, 17, 18. Um, it's all fine with me. Uh, so I'll, Councilor, move it, uh, I'll move approval. Are you, you're going to move the you're going to move the fire routes, Councillor Cole. Yeah. Seconded by Councillor Carroll. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed, uh, that is carried. Number 11. I'll do, can I move it uh, with uh, the recommendation that uh, number one, we refuse the application to demolish the single uh, dwellings here because there, uh, there are no construction permits and we don't issue demolition permits unless there are construction permits. Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, 1911, right? Oh, it's a timed item for 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll hold that down. Hey, Bob, can't really talk. I'm in a meeting. What's up? Okay. <laughs> mm? Mute mm? your thing, John. So do we have a deputation, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, in 1911? Uh, we do not. So no. why are we timing it? Um, it's statutory. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a statutory timed item. You have to give notice of when it will be considered. Okay, thank you. Uh, number 12, residential demolition application, 9 Pleasant Avenue. Time for 10 o'clock. Why don't you go down to 16? The rest are time. 
and 15 deputants and time. Yeah, so we could introduce the new items, 16 onwards. Yeah, okay, so 16 is um, bicycle exception, no through traffic signs at Shepherd and Yeomans. Uh, all those in favor of adding it to the agenda? Opposed, that's carried. Uh, Blue Ridge Road, uh, closure of cul-de-sac. Um, item number 17, all those in favor of adding it to the agenda? Opposed, that is carried. Third new item, uh, Enid Crescent, one hour parking, board eight. All those in favor of adding it to the agenda? Opposed, that is carried. And the fourth new item is remove parking area. Improved sight lines at driveway to 3018 Young Street, also Ward 8. Um, all those in favor of adding it to the agenda? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Uh, what time is it? It was 10 to 10. Oh, we can do the 945 items. Um, we have deputants for 19-1 draft report, draft plan of subdivision 28 St. Denis Drive. Uh, do we have a Victoria Williams on the line? Sorry, uh, just a point of order, Matt, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, if you can, uh, there are two things. Firstly, can you restrict, um, the... De or advise the deputants that we're only speaking about the draft subdivision because this this application the substance of it's already been approved it's just to the subdivision my my get my sense is that the residents want to kind of re retry if you will or reconsider the entire application which really isn't before us um, that was decided a number of years ago when councillor burnside was the councillor there um, and the second thing is, um, can you ask if the, uh, and this would be for all of them, um, if the applicant wants to speak, the applicant generally speaks first. Uh, yes, I'm not sure if the applicant is on the speakers list here. Okay, I just, um, sometimes they back in and they, they, they just say, oh, I'm here at the end. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, um, Madam Clerk, do, yeah. you, see, do you see any indication uh, that any of the people on the speakers list are um, the applicants? For you, Mr. Um, Chair, no, we have not re received any indication no. the applicant has registered to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, just for clarity's sake, on the speakers list, there's two columns. One is speakers and one is interested persons. Did you want to clarify? those two groups? Certainly. So the speakers column is people who've registered to speak at today's meeting. The interested persons were the ones that had registered to speak at the previous October meeting where we deferred the item. Okay, fair enough. Um, Ms. Williams? Is Victoria Williams here? We don't believe she's connected to the meeting. No, okay. Um, Sawa Abdallah. Hi, good morning. Oh, hi, Ms. Abdallah. Thank you for joining us. Um, you wanted to speak on this item. Um, just um, a reminder that uh, the heights and density and I, I believe the, the unit numbers were decided many years ago. So we're just, I think we're just dealing with the um, subdivision application according to the local council. So if you could speak to that, uh, that would be great. Yep. Should I begin? Yes, you have five minutes. So good morning, everyone. My name is Selwa, and I'm 18 years old. I've lived in Flumen Park my entire life. So from the application of the 37 story, the 12 story, and the three to uh, three uh, story townhouse. We can say that approximately the population of Flumen Park is going to be raised to 24,000 and the population density will become close to 10,000 people. 
In comparison, I'd just like to say that Toronto only has a population density of 4,000 people per square kilometers. We should reject this subdivision because the buildings in themselves already have severe impacts on the adults who live in this area. Recently, the document from TTC was published revealing that the main bus route that supports this neighborhood has purposeful overcrowding. This would target the weekdays, such as midday, PM peak, and early evening, and 42% of the neighborhood is of working age, which completely excludes the teenagers, such as myself, who also use public transit. So this census reveals that almost 50% of the neighborhood uses public transit to get to work, so that rounds out to be about 11,000 people. Public transit provides the basic mobility services. So to end this point, I'd just like to say that the Ontario Human Rights Commission has a section on transit and human rights where it says the principal discrimination that uh, can acquire from failure to take positive steps to ensure that disadvantaged groups benefit equally from the services offered to the general public is widely accepted in the human rights field. This subdivision this subdivision sees a burden, does not address the burden, and only increases the burden. So in my opinion, can be viewed as discrimination. So I'd like to say how this subdivision would personally affect me and other teenagers. So I can assure you that school takes a huge importance in my life, as I literally had a midterm yesterday, I have a midterm today, and I have a midterm tomorrow. So I'd like to say that the proposal does mention that the TDSB won't accept students going to Grenoble and Gateway, I don't think you understand that simply removing Grenoble and Gateway from the subdivision does not remove the problems because the local middle school, Valley Park, forces students to take lunch periods as early as 10 a.m. in the morning and as late as 2 p.m. in the afternoon to make room for classes in the school. The local high school, Mark Garneau, is so crowded that some students have resorted to eating lunch in the washroom. Moving on, 35% of the neighborhood lives in poverty and almost 44% of the neighborhood housing is unaffordable. This subdivision will only increase such inequality between the uh, poverty line and the people who have to rely on the government for support. So a new building recently called the Sonic Building has a starting price of almost $1 million. This will be in within a one kilometer range of where the subdivision is being built. So to ignore the issue of overcrowding, since this was already decided before, having more socioeconomically privileged families move into this neighborhood skews real census information that would lower the already little funding that the community receives to help subsidize the costs for the 35% of the families that live in poverty and the remaining who barely hover over the poverty line. In addition, these three buildings, these four buildings will be built nearby something called the Dennis R. Timberwolf Resource Center. This is our humble local community center that has a facility report card graded by the city with almost half of the facilities getting a C grade. This isn't a regular report card because in a regular report card, you can get an F failing grade. The worst part is that you cannot you cannot get a grade lower than C. So this already affects the families and the teenagers and the students that are living in this area in largely negative ways. This is a blatant case of what we call gentrification. And I'm sure all of you already know the definition, which is the process whereby the character of poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving houses, and attracting new businesses, typically displacing current inhabitants in the process. This subdivision has ignored the simple research that I could do and was in only addresses building these um, building these four buildings in a very small area that is already located in an area that is negatively impacted by all the things that I've spoke of before. So I'd like to say in, um, we're living in a time of pandemic and we've already seen six pandemics in my lifetime. So I'm sure that we're going to see another one. Building this subdivision in a community of color, in a community that constantly lacks long-term investment and, third, uh, and has a third living under poverty line, during the COVID pandemic, this subdivision will only make it harder for the families that live in the area to be able to enjoy the space around them without having to be cooped up at home. So overcrowding an already overcrowded neighborhood will only hurt this place. And since I'm only- If you could, um, you're, you're a little over five minutes. If you could just wrap up, please. Um, I, this was my concluding statement. I'm only 18 years old. I've lived in Flemington Park my whole life. I've seen how these buildings that are being built in the area have affected all of us. So I'd like to ask the North York Community Council to reject the subdivision. 
Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for the deputant? Yes. Uh, Deputy Mayor Menawan. Yeah. So I just want to go through some of the issues this this um, this uh, person raised. So um, how far is this? This development is very close to Don Mills Road, correct? Yes, very close. And you raised the issue of the lack of lack of transit, right? Yep. Are you aware that the that that the government of Ontario was building a brand new rapid transit line to address the transit issues for that community and specifically that development? Well, the rapid a transit line was supposed to be built four years ago. It's been built. It's been being built since I was in middle school. They started construction as I was in middle school in all of high school. The Eglinton and Don Mills intersection has been lowered to two lanes and in some cases one lane. So I believe that even though this may fix it, the two bus routes that help go downtown or help go to the other TTC subway stations already deal with from the TTC um, report almost 60,000 people per day. Okay. So I don't believe that this will elevate any of the stress. Let me go on to this second issue that the deputy raised, Mr. Chair. So you're concerned that that there is not enough space for schools. Is that correct? Yes. Are you aware that the city just reached reached an agreement within the last 12 months with the Toronto District School Board to build a brand new school at the corner of Don, Mill, uh, Don Mills Road in Eglinton? Yes, I am aware. And that's going to that's going to alleviate that problem. No, because what you're doing is that you're simply pushing the problem to a later thing, uh, into a later point. Right now, we have Valley Park Middle School and Don Mills Middle School. Both of them are reaching over capacity. For high schools, we have Mark No and Don Mills High School. Both of them are reaching over capacity. Don Mills High School literally has to hold classes in the middle school. Building another building to support not just one, not just two, not three, not four, but five new buildings will only increase the pressure that the TDSB deals with. Mr. Chair, I have, I'll just address the third issue. So you said there's a lack of community center space. Is that true? Because you were yes. referring to the, yeah. Are you aware that the city has in its plans to build the largest community center in the city with two swimming pools, two gyms, uh, two, two ice rinks, a gym next to a very large park that's going to be accessible to the Flemington community? Um, Councilman, I've lived in this neighborhood for my entire life, and we've been trying to get the city to try to, to fund our community, uh, our community center for over 18 years. We've had the FPPA having to hold all of these uh, events and to help get the community to group together. But the city has never once made any large contribution to our community center. So I don't believe anything until I actually see it being done. Okay, well, Mr. Chair, it's just in the capital budget. Um, I'm done. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, any other questions for the deputant? No? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Abdallah. Thank uh, you very much. Have a nice yeah. day. Okay, you too. Thank you very much. Uh, Yusuf Madadar? I don't believe they've connected to the meeting. No. Uh, Dmitry Patov? Yes, I believe I'm connected to the meeting. Oh, <laughs> hi, Mr. Patov. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. You have five minutes. Uh, could you please confirm uh, the receipt of uh, the submission that I uh, provided to the committee? Which one? I believe the clerk would have circulated it. But you haven't seen it and uh, you don't know about the content, about the issues raised? No, I believe, I believe if, if, if you sent a, if you sent a cer uh, some information for, for circulation, it would have been sent to the, the clerk would have given it to us. Um, that would be helpful if, if you have it in front of you available. It's in PDF file, and uh, you can. It, it is attached to the agenda, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it is. Yes, we've got it. 
We've got it. It's it's dated November third. on mute. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Potter, we do have it. If you could proceed, please. You have, you have five minutes. Should we start? Yes, please. You have okay, five Mr. minutes. Okay. Uh, last time, I made the motion for uh, for. Uh, the meeting to be adjourned based on the incorrect information and preceding information that was submitted by the city clerk. Now we received uh, another notice. Actually, uh, we received for the first time a written notice by the, the city clerk, and the notice still contains misleading and incorrect information. Uh, under the Planning Act, the city is required to hold a public meeting concerning the draft one of subdivision application number 19 and so on. In the notice dated October 14, sent to the residents of 25 St. Denis Drive, the city wrote, the draft one of subdivision application proposes to subdivide the land to, the, to create the flocks which includes free development box, a public park block, a road widening block, and a new public street. Further, the notice provides provide purpose of public meeting. North York Communities Council, we receive input and review the proposal and any other material placed before it in order, in order to make recommendations on the app application. Then it also reads, you are invited to make a presentation to North York Community Council. Now, the question and issue here is, where is the draft plan and showing how the land on which the building were nearly, on which the building where nearly 1,000 community members live will be divided? There is no such plan. It is not shown. Also, do you really expect to receive an input from community members and hear their views on a draft plan that have not been seen because the city is unwilling to disclose it. So the unavoidable conclusion for a reasonable person like me would be city's concealment of fundamental and essential information concerning a proposal about which it invites input from the community exposes city perversion of the process, mockery of openness and fairness, and gross disregard to the interests of the public. All done in an apparent effort to accommodate the applicant at any cost at the expense of the public interest and the interest of the community members. Also deserving attention, I would like uh, to uh, direct uh, your uh, attention uh, to this point, to this issue. While it is just speculation uh, due to the city's failure to properly inform the community, it appears that the proposed draft plan will, re <clears throat> will require the removal of about 40 healthy trees at 25 St. Denis Drive. If that is the case, the residents would like their say to be heard and considered. Also, there is an underground parking garage used by the residents, which might be impacted by the proposed draft plan to divide the land. If that is the case, the residents would like their say to be heard, also heard and considered. So uh, with this regard, I think there is a sufficient and compelling grounds to adjourn the, the meeting. Uh, on these grounds, I'm making a formal motion uh, to you And my motion is, my motion to the committee is to defer item 19.1 until December after the city delivers the necessary information that was omitted in the October 14th notice, the uh, notice to the resident. All right, uh, Mr. Popov, um, are you finished? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you for your comment. Are there any questions for the I have questions of staff. Uh, 
we'll, we'll get to questions for staff. Carol, question for the deputy. Uh, thank you. I, I do. And I'm wondering if, if the residents can just make uh, clear for me, I'm struggling with this because we're dealing with a, with a, uh, a development that is already through the initial application phase that, that was approved in a previous term of office uh, by this council, uh, it went through North York Community Council, but it has already been approved. And this is a later phase. The draft plan of subdivision simply deals with the conditions around uh, uh, construction and, and, and survey issues, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm wondering if we defer this yet again, what is the missing information that, that, uh, that residents from your association are looking for? May I speak, uh, Council Carol? Yes, yes. Okay, I think it was uh, clear what information is missing. And I, I would like to ask you, would you please uh, tell uh, the participant on this meeting where the information, where is the draft plan? I, I already uh, pointed out uh, to you. And uh, can you please point out where is this draft plan? So we would have an idea. Actually, we are allowed and uh, we are entitled to see how you intend uh, to fight uh, this uh, land. Where so, you, you... so I'm That's wondering it. if there's a, a problem of, uh, uh, <coughs> of terminology. Are you asking where is the draft plan of the whole development, the, the plan that has already been approved? It's attachment Cause... seven. It's a tax because, concern. yeah, because draft plan of subdivision is a terminology we use for the the later step that we're going through now. But the draft plan of this whole neighborhood development is is subject to a very long and thick report. I remember it. And and you can look at it by looking at the attachments and as as the local councillor now, the present local councillor points out, in attachment seven of this report is the draft plan of this neighborhood that has already been approved and, and all the details that you need of what 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 was approved are there. Uh, Council Carol, uh, you're uh, referring to information that was not on the notice sent to the residents. Second, uh, what uh, was sent to the residents? Uh, a link to the website, uh, the, the web address uh, www.toronto.ca.open slash 3D. The sign says that the 3D massing model was available. Uh, th this is uh, the only information, actually, uh, uh, link, I would say, where the residents reasonably expect to see the mass model, to have an idea, as I said, how you plan, what is the draft plan, uh, what is the draft plan uh, included in this uh, sub subdivision. And uh, when you visit, uh, uh, I I'm quite sure that you have never attempted to check uh, this uh, link, but it is in the submission. When you... Uh, try to connect and to find the information we are talking about that is uh, the subject matter at uh, this uh, issue, you will receive a message from the server that says, we are having trouble finding that site or cannot reach this website. This information, uh, this uh, fake link was on the first notice signed and then on the notice that was uh, made out to all residents. So you're, uh, yet again, uh, the issue here is that you're referring to information that is unaccessible and that was not included in these uh, uh, written notices. So don't expect uh, people to go and uh, delve into all, all this documentation. If you are sincere and if you are willing to make this information to the tenants and expect them to make an input based on objectionable information, then please provide this information and uh, don't quibble, please. Uh, no, it's not that I'm quibbling. I'm trying to understand um, where the uh, where the the gaps in in our communication or gaps in understanding are. Um, in your submission, what you're talking about is the thing that on the sign talks about if you'd like to see a 3D version of the massing. And I will agree with you that that the 3D massing open data portal. Uh, is fallible at times, I, and, and it, that's probably what the, the local councillor is going to be asking questions about. But the, 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 the bulk of the information is in this actual report, which I believe is 
also mentioned in in our, our signs when we when we give notice of a draft plan to subdivision um, when people receive notice they don't get all those pages because we're trying to reduce uh, um, the amount of paper that's being spent and going out but uh, would you agree that there's also a link to the report that we're considering today Councillor uh, Carol it seems to me that you're missing the point uh, I don't know you're Doing it deliberately or uh, uh, no, just, not uh, deliberately. I'm really trying to understand uh, if, we, okay. did, if um, we forgot to put the link to the actual report on the sign. Yeah, I can't you know, um, you're well over five minutes. Um, okay, I, I, I'll ask staff, and staff will be able to tell us what was on the sign. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions for the, the deputant? Um, just I, I would. I would simply um, ask just very quickly, um, and I'm reading through your, your submission here, your your argument here there, it was that there was a lack of, of detail in public notifications and that when you tried to contact city staff, they wouldn't answer or they wouldn't respond. Is that is that what you're saying? You've got a buzzer now? Dimitri? I'm not Dimitri, but as a member of the neighborhood, I would like to say that since I am very tech savvy, I've literally tried searching the entire city council website and all the links that were sent and the two I'm notices sure. that were sent out recently. It is inaccessible. Yeah, I'm not sure who you are. Um, I'm the previous speaker, Ms. Abdullah. That Abdulla. was the former uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Oh, yeah, Chair. No, we'll ask staff. Oh, they, they, let's they, control this thing. You've certainly had your five minutes. Um, it's someone else's turn. It seems he has connection. Madam Clerk, can we kind of control the speakers list, please? Okay. Um, questions for staff? I have questions. Okay. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, so um, I, this probably is either the clerk or legal. Um, this was on the last agenda because there was a complaint by one of the deputants that proper notice wasn't sent out. Um, so to remedy that, we deferred. The, the reason why it's come to this meeting is because we took the time to correct that problem by, by, by uh, sending out the notice that what wasn't properly sent out the last time is that is that a fair characterization for you, you mr chair the notice wasn't improper in other words uh it, it it's met the requirements of the planning act but because clerks has a general practice of also sending additional notice to the residents of the building we agreed to defer it and then uh, resend it and that has now so, been done and so so that was done so we sent it to the residents of the building right correct so we've we've we're sure and and in terms of the materials you know with regard to the subdivision uh um all that um, uh, agreement and all the requirements and the drawings that's all within the the report that's on the city that's attached to this agenda meeting it's on the city's website and for consideration at this meeting correct that's correct are you aware if in terms of form where we that we've met all the requir proper requirements and that we're not, um, you know, in violation of any of the form or requirements that we're, uh, that we need to follow. We're not in violation, no. I see. Okay, well, um, I'm, that's fine. So uh, I'm satisfied. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Any other questions for staff? Uh, Councillor Carroll, and take off your mute button. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I have a question about the sign itself. And I know that this is tricky because there are actually legislative guidelines around what a sign has to say. But I'm a little frustrated in that while the sign clearly points out that that the, the, the application has already been approved by the provincial authority called the Local Planning Appeal. Um, what is before us is is the draft plan of subdivision and the sign points out that that's all we're looking at is the draft plan of subdivision which subdivides uh, uh, 
the lot around the, the various structures that have already been approved. But I'm having trouble finding on the sign uh, the, the issue that, that directs people to, to open portal uh, to look at the 3D massing. Is that something that was in the notice to the residents? Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe that the information on the sign on the bottom is uh, the information that we believe directs people to the bulk of the information. So there's the community planning name and number, the, the individual plan. Yes. And then there's the application information center. And that's the link that would lead you to all the plans and everything that's been submitted. Right. Okay. So that that you know, that is on there. That's true. And that's true. And if you if you are tech savvy and you you put that city file into the planning uh, website, the list of applications, you should get everything that LPAT approved. Um, so the question is this: When we sent a notice to the residents, um, it, it, that's 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 a little more our design. I don't know that it, I don't know if it has legislative guidelines about how you how you form that that notice to the residents. But did that? Did that have a clear explanation of how you get to the links? And if you can't get to the links, here's the number to call. Is the planner's name there? The planner's name is on the notice that went out to the individual residents. Um, I don't see the same link to the information center. As you said, uh, the this notice is a bit more of a creation of our own, but the planner's name and telephone number and email address are all listed. As well as a okay, so description of the subdivision itself. Right. So if someone was having trouble um, using the, the city planning file numbers to get to the application list, they could phone that planner and they, they'd walk them through the navigation of the site. That's right. And in fact, Mr. Popov did receive, uh, I think, more than one email from uh, both the city planner and the manager. Oh, okay. Those, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Carroll. Any other questions for staff? Speakers, I'll speak. Yeah, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Just very Five briefly. Minutes. Yeah, um, I'm happy to move the report. Um, I will briefly say that I I am aware that there are many different um, issues in the Flemington community, but I think actually, in terms of investment, this this area is getting getting more investment planned over the next number of years than anywhere else in the city. I would imagine. Um, not not only, and the, one, the first deputy that reminded me that I didn't even mention that they're getting uh, the Eglinton Cross Town that's going to deal with transit, right? Seven billion dollar project. Um, the Ontario Line is planned. There's going to be a stop, two stops, one at the, at Eglinton and Don Mills Road that's going to create a transit hub, and the second one is going to be in the Fleming community. Um, they're getting two. Uh, two, two two stops. Um, if it's uh, that's that that's going to go south, so that's fantastic, and that's another part of a multi-billion-dollar project. Um, I am aware that schools are crowded, but but this council entered into an agreement with the Toronto District School Board to build a brand new school within the podium of a city property at the southwest corner of uh, of Don Mills and Eglinton. So. Check that box in terms of addressing uh, educational issues, and then in terms of uh, recreational services, um, you know I, we're all aware that many of our community centers need to be fixed. But we're building the biggest, hopefully the biggest community center in the city. Check that box. So those are all new investments. Um, and uh, is there going to be new new development in the area? Yeah, there absolutely is. Why? Because all these new all these new projects there's all the, all that investment and people want to live in that community um so just very briefly to the you know the draft plan of subdivision um this has already been decided by i mean the, the whether we're going to do this or not was decided by previous council by uh, council by a previous councillor this is more of a um a technical report for approval um, and we have uh, we listened to Mr. Popoff um, in terms of satisfying the need for proper notice. That has been done. Um, there doesn't seem to be 
a material need for additional delay or deferral on this matter. Um, so uh, I'm happy to move approval. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Any other speakers on the item? Uh, Councillor Cole. Take your mute button off. Take your mute. He's, He's on. on. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to say, um, yeah, I wish uh, I was getting uh, a $50 billion community center with two pools in my area of the city and two subways. Uh, Eight a million. new school. So could you please uh, share the wealth there, Councillor Minimum? I'd love to have that uh, there in, uh, in Ward 8. Uh, but I just want to say, I think it sort of brings uh, to light two issues. Uh, first of all, is that all these amazing investments that are being made uh, in this area of Don Mills and Eglinton, uh, I guess somehow we've got to get uh, more information out there. I know the city councillors with our mega wards, it's very difficult to communicate and then our budgets are very limited. So I think we have to uh, repeatedly get that information about these new investments out into the community in better ways, especially now as a result of COVID, uh, we can't have public meetings. Uh, so, and then we've got the issue of, uh, you know, virtual meetings, which are very limiting uh, because a lot of people don't have access to uh, all this digital media. And so I think as an advisory to uh, our uh, planning department and other uh, North York Community Council clerk's office, we've got to find a more robust way of getting uh, information uh, through uh, more detailed mailings, multiple mailings, I don't know what the answer is, uh, out to people, uh, given we're gonna be in this COVID lockdown for the next couple of years. Uh, so uh, I, would, I would also say that it brings up the other issue about the complexity of the planning approval process. As you can see by the, uh, the deputants uh, making their honest pleas for more information, more explanation, I, I think there is a real lack of uh, ability for the public and all of us to understand the complexity of the planning process, uh, draft plan of subdivision, LPAT. I mean, if you ask anybody on the street, I'm sure 99 out of 100 would have no idea what LPAT is or T-Lab. Uh, uh, and so we have to find a better way of communicating uh, this information because this is a technical report, the decision uh, for the developments already been made. Uh, and uh, so this is a procedural uh, issue, uh, but it's hard for the public to understand these complex issues. And uh, given uh, what's happening with the lack of public uh, in-person meetings, I think we uh, need to bring this uh, forward to council, not only community council, but council as a whole, uh, in terms of how do we communicate with people when we can't meet in public. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cole. Any other speakers? I, I would I would just add for 30 seconds, I would congratulate the local councillor. Uh, I would agree with Councillor Cole that the resources he's bringing into his community, uh, school, community center, high level transit lines. I mean, that, that is something that every com community wishes on. and. If there's a price to pay, it's density because people want to live there. They want to live near a beautiful school and a beautiful community center and, and high-level transit. Uh, who wouldn't want uh, to live there? And besides that, density uh, brings in some money to help pay for it as well. So I congratulate the local councillor on his achievement in building such a strong community there. And, and I, hope, uh, I hope in the future as these things get built, uh, that the local community sees how lucky they are and how precious these resources are because the rest of us would like like them as well. So um, with that, I will um, uh, I will leave it. Um, did the local council want to move the recommendations? Yes. Okay. Um, recommendations being moved, all those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Mr. Chair, um, I have to leave the meeting in uh, two minutes for half an hour. So 
I would ask that we either deal with 12 and 13 now. I think they're both very quick or um, or uh, after 11. Uh, well, um, Brother you John, speak, can you just move them? Yeah, uh, I can move them if there's no uh, deputants. Yeah, I'll be moving. Yeah, uh, I don't see. Uh, Madam Clerk, I don't see deputants on either uh, items 12 or 13. Confirming that is correct. And, okay. okay, so um, Councillor Fillion, um, if you can move them, uh, that would be great. But if we're going into questions for staff and yeah, speakers. Yeah, no, no, I'm just moving um, refusal of both of them. They're properties that are part of a development application that is currently being uh, considered and um, you, you know the process is you don't tear down the building until um, you know we go through that process. Okay, so on we're in 1912 um, and we're um, selecting option on number one, the refusal of the demolition request. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? Uh, that is carried. 1913. Also, um, residential demolition application, 11 Pleasant Avenue. Uh, Councillor Fillon, are you also moving refer refusal? Yes. All right, uh, the motion is on the screen. It's item number one. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, refusal. Opposed, uh, that is carried. Um, you, you, will, you will come back though, right? Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. We're looking forward to seeing you in half an hour. And I'll miss you terribly in the next half hour. Well, you know, we'll miss you too. Okay, item number two, um, request for direction report, zoning bylaw amendment 1861 O'Connor Drive. I have a one deputant, um, Janice Robinson from the Goldberg Group. Madam Clerk, do we have Ms. Robinson on the line? Confirming she is connected to the meeting, but Ms. Robinson, if you can please connect your mic. Can you hear me now? Oh, Ms. Robinson? Yes. Good morning. Oh, hi. good morning. <laughs> Thanks can... for joining us. Thanks for joining us. You're um, deputing on the uh, 1861 O'Connor Drive um, zoning bylaw amendment? Yes. Okay, great. Are you the applicant? Yes, I'm representing the owners of 1861 O'Connor Drive. Okay, great. Thank you very much for coming in five minutes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of committee. This is an application for a nine-story mid-rise building, 27 meters in height, which is the width of the O'Connor Drive right-of-way, and planned in accordance with the city's official plan policies, the mid-rise guidelines, the applicable site and area-specific policies, and the O'Connor Drive design guidelines, all of which have planned for a mid-rise development in this location since 2012. The report before you today is for direction on attendance at the LPAT hearing and to initiate mediation in advance of the hearing. We've already advised staff that we're willing to participate in mediation of this matter. Despite what the report says, we're actually not very far apart on design matters. The reason for this delegation is with respect to the staff recommendation that an H, a holding provision, be applied to the land in the zoning bylaw. The H being recommended is with respect to the realignment of O'Connor Drive as recommended in the Golden Mile Secondary Plan. The rezoning application for this mid-rise proposal has been in pro process for a year and a half, had been in progress for a year and a half, when in May 2019, it became affected by the Golden Mile Secondary Plan and the proposed realignment of O'Connor Drive. The Golden Mile Secondary Plan was amended last year to add the area west of Victoria Park Avenue to the study area for the purpose of planning the road realignment of O'Connor Drive. Now, the Golden Mile Secondary Plan, it plans <clears throat> tall buildings and high-density development in the Golden Mile area 
east of Victoria Park in Scarborough District, but it does not plan anything new west of Victoria Park, except for the O'Connor Drive realignment. The O'Connor Drive realignment is intended to facilitate the redevelopment plan in the Golden Mile in Scarborough District, and it has no benefit whatsoever to the area west of Victoria Park. Instead, the secondary plan policies, the Golden Mile secondary plan contains policies stating that the lands west of Victoria Park will be subject to an H until the road infrastructure, being the O'Connor Drive realignment, is figured out through a municipal class environmental assessment study. So as a consequence, what this means, the owners west of Victoria Park are delayed for the purpose of the road realignment west of Victoria Park that only benefits the owners east of Victoria Park in the Golden Mile. Our opposition to those policies in the Golden Mile secondary plan is on record. The application at 1861 O'Connor Drive happens to be the first application west of Victoria Park to be subject to this recommendation for an H. I'm telling you today that the owners object to this H. The realignment of O'Connor Drive goes through 1861 O'Connor Drive and there is no land for a mid-rise development if the realignment of O'Connor Drive proceeds. The recommendation that any approved zoning bylaw contain a holding symbol until substantial completion of the municipal class environmental assessment study for the Gold Mile area is an inappropriate and incorrect use of the holding provisions. In particular, it's premature to place an H where the actual impacts and justification for the proposed realignment are not determined and the development's ready to proceed without that realignment. It's vague and unclear what is meant by substantial completion the timing of the environmental assessment process is to proceed. So the amount of time for substantial completion is completely unknown. We asked the city's transportation planner at one of the Golden Mile secondary plan meetings, and he said one to two years. We don't know. Many of those studies take longer than that. With no funding in place for the land acquisition, and I note that this realignment is not part of Council's capital plan for the time period 2020 to 2029, there is no reason why this process will advance quickly. In conclusion, the owners object to the H. It is an expropriation without being an expropriation. And it only benefits lands in another area, east of Victoria Park. You're being advised of this objection today and this position will be taken at the LPAT hearing of the rezoning application, which is scheduled for March of 2021. The H would only freeze my client's lands for years to come and delay or possibly prevent development of a project that is otherwise you permitted. Could, um, I'm wrapping you're, up you're, now. Yeah, you're just over five minutes. Which is otherwise permitted by all of the city's planning policies and guidelines. That concludes my presentation. Great, thank you very much. Any questions for the deputant? No? Ms. Robinson, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions for staff? No? Yeah. I have okay. Questions. Deputy Mayor? Um, so if this if this development, uh, the first thing is, the first question I want to confirm is um, you're going to enter into a They've gone to the LPAT. They were pretty fast at, at doing that. Um, if there's a settlement agreement, that will come back to council, correct? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, that is correct. If there is any settlement on uh, on the application before us t today, it would uh, come back to, to city council, yes. Are you proposing to put an H on the property? That is part of the recommendations in the report, correct. Good, good. And, and, um, the um, if part of this proposed um, realignment of roads takes place, that will go right through their property, correct? The the municipal class environmental assessment is looking at options. Um, yes, that's the, one of the, the options. Yes, the preferred option is through the site. I um, mean, another option would be a, a do nothing option where they don't put it through the site. 
Um, so the recommendation of the hold is, uh, is, is to figure out uh, exactly the road realignment and how it may or may not impact this property. Uh, right. Staff have advised me that at the pre-application meeting, uh, the, the road realignment issue was discussed with the applicant as well. When did they file this application, the original application? It was 2018, I believe. And did they know at the time of the potential road realignment? I believe it was discussed at the pre-application meeting that there could be a potential for a road realignment. Right, but that had already been sort of, that was a, um, it wasn't a secret that the road realignment could go, go directly through their property, correct? I, I don't believe so. Okay, good. So the arrangement would be now, be, you know, if, if I had, if, if someone had owned that property and they knew that, um, that was one of the options to, to come in with a redevelopment application would significantly increase if approved the value of that property. And if the environment, if one of, if that option was chosen, then, then that land would be as expropriated and the city would have to pay that increased value from, from that applicant because there, there would be additional density on the site. Is that correct? I can't speak to the, the increase in value. The site itself is designated mixed use. Uh, mm. so there is an in, inherent uh, understanding that the mixed use designation allows for um, a variety of, of, of development on the site. Right. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, any other questions for staff? No? Um, speakers? I'll speak. Yeah, Mr. I'll Deputy move the Mayor. recommendations in the report, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't love this application. I don't love it at all. Um, just because of what I see as a, a potential, uh, what you know, what they're potentially doing, which mean, which is they're taking a property that was previously undervalued. They found out that the city was potentially going to put a road through the property and so they filed an application that they may never build and will actually end up paying for it which i first i, I per, personally as a local councillor as a taxpayer you know find that objectionable some would say offensive um but we are where we are they're doing what they're doing um and uh i support the ar arrangements that have been recommended by uh by city staff in this uh, in this in this report. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, you're moving the staff recommendations? Yes, sir. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item number four, we have uh, speaker 2654 2668 uh, Bayview Avenue. Uh, Sean McGaffrey. McGaffrey. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, are you the Are you the applicant? Uh, yes, I am, and uh, I just registered to speak just to make sure uh, someone would be available to answer any questions uh, should uh, questions come forward from any members of the committee or uh, any members of the public. Uh, but generally, uh, in support of the staff recommendations, uh, and just happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, any questions for the deputant? I wish I'd also be all deputants for that short. Um, any questions for the deputant? No? Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. McGaffey, you had an easy morning. Um, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Um, any questions for staff? No? Any speakers? This is really just scheduling a community consultation. I'd be happy to move it on behalf of Councillor Robinson. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Um, item number five. Uh, we do have speakers, uh, zoning bylaw amendment application 126-132 Laird Drive. Mirzana uh, Mark Martinakis. Um, oh, yes, thank 
You're on the line. Thank you very much for joining us. Your five minutes. So thank you. I'm actually just going to defer to the other speaker, uh, Donna Wilson. She's on the line, and uh, she's, she'll be speaking on our behalf. All righty. Great. Thank you very much, thank Ms. You. Wilson. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, good morning. Thank you very much. You have five minutes. Great. Thank you. Um, my name is Donna Wilson. And I live on Randolph Road. This is the street that is just west of Laird. Um, today we're here speaking to you about uh, two proposed um, developments at 126 through to 132 Laird, um, Laird Road. Um, and I'm here today representing the views and opinions of the residents on Randolph Road. And as a community, as community, we have gathered together some issues and concerns that we have regarding this development, um, specifically how this will impact Laird from Millwood to Southvale. We recognize that this is very, very early in the proposal stages, but we would like to bring to the attention of the council um, some issues that we have about this proposal. Um, starting with, um, actually, I should have asked in the beginning. We did provide a deck. I don't know if that was received or not. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, was a, um, a deck received from uh, Ms. Wilson? It should be in CMP for your review. Uh, yes. Uh, we did, we did, Miss Wilson. Yes, I've got Perfect. it in front of. Oh my gosh, it's ten pages long. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm only yeah. going to speak to to very high, high level. Yeah, of these, just of these um, no. You're welcome to speak. Just out of clarity. Yes. Uh, the only thing before us about this application today is to direct staff to cons to uh, arrange or schedule a community consultation. Absolutely, and we recognize that. Um, but as a community, we wanted to have. A few of the issues that we currently see with the application put forward just for to be recognized and on record. Um, so I will be very brief in my speaking. I won't I won't go through these seven slides, but basically the issues that we have on hand are the proposed building heights and setbacks. Um, currently it is proposed for eight stories high plus a mechanical floor above that. The angles obviously are um, a discussion here in the front they're asking the developer is asking for a one meter um, frontage onto Laird versus a three meter and in the rear um, there's discussion as to whether there is going to be um, 11 meters or whether there is going to be nine meters depending on these angular planes that will that will decide how many floors we get this is a very small uh, footprint and uh, really these these angular planes and these um, setbacks really need to be considered um, throughout this process. Um, as well, the, in the front, if we reduce the setback in the front, we will no longer have any treescape because of the minimized um, one meter down or three meters down to one meter. Um, our biggest concern, or one of our biggest concerns, is the mid rise wall on Laird. Um, there, this, th these two properties. Um, on the Mazda dealership location will be um, property number three and four um, along the Laird Drive. We are now creating a wall along Laird. This will set precedence for further development um, south along Laird. This is not in keeping with the Leaside community and what we are looking for. Um, currently, the, the, uh, the, the uh, properties that have already been proposed and agreed to and are already starting in construction are seven and uh, eight, nine stories high. If we continue this path, which this start with these two buildings with eight, eight to nine floors high, and then subsequently more buildings of the same structure along their drive, we are just creating one large wall. And I can tell you that the community is not happy about that. We need to think about how this looks. On the west side, we have um, all these nine stories, and on the east side, we have two-story buildings. This is not proper land. This is not proper urban design. These need to be considered. Um, as well, within the unit, we need to look at fewer units, 
and we need to consider the bylaws, which speak to whether we have commercial um, on the lower level plus the residential um, on the upper level. These things need to be taken into consideration, as well as the servicing. Um, there's water tables underneath these buildings, and how does this impact the um, the servicing for the rest uh, for the uh, community? Um, we need to take all these things into consideration as these go forward, and the community needs to be involved in all these discussions. Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for your comments. Uh, any questions for the deputant? No. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and, and this is an excellent deck here. I hope, uh, I, I know uh, planning staff will uh, will look it over. Um, so thank you very much. Um, Jeff Cattell. <laughs> Jeff? I think there might be a squeaky... Um, 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 I think we've got a sound, a sound problem. Um, Jeff, are you on the line? Oh dear. Um, it's a little squeaky. Can you? Um, more than squeaky. Um, Madam Clerk, can IT fix this, or what would you suggest? We're just looking into it right now. It sounds more like the munchkins or something. Mr. Kettle, if you can hear me, uh, our team from IT has sent you an email with a phone number to call in. Can we move on to another item and get back to this? Well, it is going slow this morning, I've got to tell you. Um, Uh, Councillor Cole, did you want to deal with um, item 11 very quickly? Hello? Oh, is he on now? Yeah, he's yes, on. Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, you have five hi, minutes. My apologies uh, for that, uh, Councillor. Uh, no problem. Um, no problem. Look, yeah, so um, we, we're following from the comments that the previous speaker, uh, residents on Randolph had made, and my comments refer to both the items uh, NY 19.6 and 19.5, which uh, refer to the two buildings which are located contiguous to each other. So they're the same comments applied really to both buildings. They're both um, eight-story mid-rise buildings. The um, comments are as follows. First of all, in terms of context, the, the context of this application is very important. Laird Drive has in place two approved plans and now two submitted plans for a total of four contiguous seven and eight story mid-rise buildings that will stretch almost 300 meters from just south of McRae to well south of Stickney, a distance which amounts to about one third of the length of, of Laird Drive from Eglinton down to Southvale. And we are aware that this type of redevelopment on the west side of Laird may only be the beginning. Uh, we have gone through the Laird in Focus um, plan, um, and, um, and in fact, the plan is being delivered in effect. Uh, there are a number, of, um, a number of concerns, some of them raised by the previous speaker. Um, our um, issue, um, we probably look at it a little bit broader in terms of the context of the whole community. First of all, um, conformity with the Laird in Focus plan. The, um, the official plan amendment um, cite uh, the SASP uh, 568 and the urban design guidelines, which include measures such as angular planes, setbacks, and stepbacks, front and rear apply. 
uh, the densities of the proposed developments exceed those approved in the earlier 146 to 150 layer development. Um, um, and it, the, the, the new developments are 4.21 and 4.13, which exceed the the earlier development, which is 3.48, despite being further away, over 700 meters from the LRT station. So we're concerned that the, the, the so-called mid-rise march of sets of so-called complementary buildings and developers building to the guidelines may be at risk of producing a street wall comprised of nondescript and repetitious developments. We would encourage differentiation uh, through use of variable design, different materials, um, ornamentation and accents. We, we do not want a uniform, um, boring uh, street. Um, so thirdly, in terms of the animation of the street, while the layered mid-rise developments like Bayview are in the mix, mixed-use designation, unlike Bayview, they have no retail at grade currently, uh, being totally residential or institutional in the case of 146, 150 layered, which is, has the senior uh, rental building, uh, buildings. On, on the one hand, this is understandable, given that the other side of layered is now largely converted to large-scale retail commercial uses, including the smart center and the layered village with its longos. However, the accepted wisdom regarding the purpose of retail at grade is to create an animated, vibrant, community-friendly streetscape. So if not retail, how can the desirable condition be realized? The 126, um, the two buildings, uh, two applicants, are both proposing uh, live-work units fronting on lead. It's unclear whether and how these would produce the desired results. Perhaps there should be a consideration of alternative uses, such as community or medical services. Fourthly, the neighbors at the rear, and you've heard from them, what is the impact on the residential properties to the rear? Um, we'll be working closely with Randolph Road neighbors, um, both east and west sides, to ensure that the setbacks are appropriate. And overlook over the neighboring residential properties is limited. Fifthly, we support the access to each building being from Stickney Avenue rather than Laird. Access from Elaine or Stickney would have been helpful to the earlier development at 146 Laird 2. 6.6, 6, the applicant's LPAD appeal. We note that the applicant has, has appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal for the Laird in Focus policy about the minimum setback of three meters from the Laird Drive right away, despite it being recommended by the Laird in Focus planning study with community input and city council approval. Frankly, this is disappointing. As the applicant committed to us in a pre-application meeting over a year ago that they would be compliant with the policies and guidelines in place, we did not expect them to appeal the policies that were being put in place. Point seven, uh, Toronto Green Standards. The applicant commits only to, to, to Green Standard Tier Time 1. Time, Mr. Chair. Um, there are two items. Can I have some additional time? I'm speaking for both items. Are you on mute? Well, he's yes. No, uh, um, Jeff, you've just gone over five minutes. If you could wrap up, please. Um, yeah, but as I point, as I noted, there are two items here, right? There, there's um, five and six. Yeah, but we didn't combine them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Can, so, can I? Well. Can I come yes, back on in on that, yeah. Mr. Chair, to move to combine so that we can save some time? Yeah. And yeah, I'll only be another yeah. couple of minutes anyway. Okay, so the, the, the uh, number seven was the, the green standards. They're, they're only committing to tier one, which is the mandatory minimum. We would support the development being built to a much higher tier to appreciably reduce or eliminate uh, greenhouse gas emissions. In, in addition, the applicant should be encouraged to provide ample facilities for electric vehicle charging and electric car bike rentals in order to make efficient use of the parking space allocations. The allocations don't seem to be generous in our opinion. Uh, point eight, streetscape improvements. We note that Laird in Focus recommended major streetscape improvements like wider sidewalks and bike lanes facilitated in part by developments underway. 
we urge the city to fund and proceed with these streetscapes as soon as possible, not wait till everything um, is, um, is built up, um, get them going. And the final point I would make, um, which is not part of our written submission, but occurred, uh, sort of realized in further thinking about this issue, um, and that is the, the whole, um, the water, the hydro, hydrogeological situation. The, um, the, this, this location, um, on this side, the, the streams that run into the Don Valley, the Don River, run from the northwest to the southeast. They come across this location, um, but placing large buildings um, on there will create, in effect, a dam. Um, to to um, where the water will pond against. Um, we found the same thing happening um, when we were involved with the Sunnybrook Plaza, um, and we hired um, uh, hydrogeologist experts to look at that. I think the the folks on um, on Randolph really have a very valid um, concern there about the ponding of water that could happen um, by by the creation of this dam. That completes my, um, uh, the comments from the Leaside Resident Association at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for your comments. Um, just a reminder to all deputies, we are only approving a community consultation. Councillor Carroll, I understand you have some questions. Uh, yeah, just a quick question because I, I I I share the 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 residents concern while we're at the preliminary phase. I want to highlight things that so they actually get talked about during this phase, and 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 uh, uh, I want to make sure. I, I I know the local councilor is probably listening to the meeting as well. Um, Jeff, I wonder if you could tell us when I saw live work here. I thought fine. If you really mean live work, and your your uh, your vast knowledge is probably such that 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 you would know about this and share my concern, we we talk about live work units, but we don't lay down conditions as firmly as as has been done in the UK, where live work units really guarantee give us a way of guaranteeing that we have some management of making sure that retail is is local business incentivizing has some sort of design element to it live work units for instance there um uh in the planning approval it's it's laid down in law if you're not going to use the work part of the unit you have to rent it out as a work part of the unit so that if you're trying to create like a fashion village or something like that something that that is sort of missing from Lee side now and, and, and might work that we lay that down during this development process. Would that would that change the uh, the, the 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 residents feeling about live work? Um, to be honest, um, Councillor Carroll, we we are really not um, we, you know we really haven't uh, had time or or been able to talk to anybody about what this concept means. Um, we are familiar with the retail at grade, you know, on Bayview and Mount Pleasant and so on. Um, that's been the predominant issue is how do you, you know, how do you make sure that the retail happens? You can create the spaces, but if they're too shallow, they don't work. But, but we are aware that the city has developed retail guidelines, had them approved through PHC at the last meeting. And so that, that's a really positive thing. I don't know if the city has any, any vision or any guidelines on, as you say, on live work. Um, across yeah. the road is the Leaside Business Park, and, it, and we probably would. What we should be doing here is entering into some discussion with the Leaside Business Park Association to make sure that you know that there is some communication there. Um, there are people very interested in in um, in, in reviewing the effect of uh, uh, you know the uh, the LRT and so on, and revitalizing the Leaside Business Park. Maybe. Maybe uh, there's some relationship that could be. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to uh, to reach out to them myself. But but in fact, the city um, we could bring bring that up in the public consultations as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That that's my thank, main question. Mr. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. Any other questions for the deputant? Great. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jeff, and that also includes your comments on item 19.6, uh, 134, Laird. Soon. Thank you very much. So quick um, question of staff, Mr. Chair. Yeah, um, sure. Um, if we're if we're combining these two, uh, Councillor Carroll, then Ms. Uh, Wilson and Ms. Uh, Martinakis um, get another chance to talk. I believe you mo moved a motion to combine. 
because a speaker had registered to speak to both. I don't know if Ms. Wilson registered to speak to both. Yeah, that's the problem. So um, it's not really a problem. You either registered to speak to two items or you didn't. I, what I was oh. combining was the speaker's ability to speak to two. I wasn't necessarily combining consideration of the items. That's that's up to you. All right. Okay. So let's. Fair enough. So let's let's do um, let's. Number five, then we go to number six. We invite uh, the two speakers back. Uh, this, You're uh, thank you. This is Marisana Martakis. Uh, there are no additional comments. The uh, comments presented were for both items. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Councillor Karras for staff, your, your mic is on mute. Thanks. Just a quick question because we're at the preliminary phase, but but as you go into consultation with this community, um, I, I wonder if staff heard my, my, my question of Mr. Kettle. What I was getting at is there's a growing, you know, suspicion with, with, uh, with residents in the downtown core. I've had people talk to me about this. Yeah, you say live work, but what does that mean? There's a live work unit, then they call it a studio, and then they cover it over with, with thick blinds, and it's, it's not really animating anything. So um, do we have in our retail guidance or do we have the potential here? As we go forward, you have lots of issues here that the residents have raised, height and massing. But is there is there the ability within the consideration of an application to set some guidelines so that live work really means live work? And I'm referring to that. That that you know, growing thing that's happened in London, UK, in the Spitalfields area, out in the suburbs, where live work means if you're not using the work unit to animate the street, you got to let it out to someone who does. If you like your shop but you're not living behind, then you have to rent that out to someone as housing. Do we have the ability to negotiate that in these applications as we go? Through you, Mr. Mr. Chair, and the 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 application. I mean, we we have raised land use as an issue in the prelim report on page six. The Laird and Focus uh, site and area specific policy speaks to uh, grade um, speaks to active uh, uses for buildings uh, along Laird Drive, including commercial, office, institutional, and it, and it's a way to animate the street. So that was part of the the um, the the vision for Laird Drive. Um, this live work concept that the application that the applicant has, has just introduced is, is something we haven't really explored with them and it's something we'll explore moving forward and, and that's why the land use section was flagged uh, under the prelim report to have a closer look at that to make sure that the space is animated so exactly as you said it doesn't get closed off and it's not animated and active to the street uh, through you mr chair i would just add um to that by saying that I don't think the Planning Act gives us, you know, the kind of authority you're looking for to compel someone to lease out the bottom portion if they don't use it, for example. Um, I mean, we can look into that, but I'm, you know, just sort of my gut understanding of it is probably that's not the case. You know, that said, there are a lot of design considerations you need to put into live work before you could rightly consider it live work. Like, you actually do need that larger floor to ceiling heights on the ground floor. You know, if it was a three meter ground floor, that's not going to be a live work unit. Like we kind of know that. Um, and also, you you would want for for accessibility reasons the entrance to come flush. You know, typically, councillor, you would know on a residential building, you have a couple steps up to right. to a front door. Can't have that for. <clears throat> Excuse me, can't really have that for a live work unit. You actually need it to be accessible, right? So those are the there, are, and we could probably use the zoning bylaw to zone that area you know, on the ground floor for retail, commercial, whatever you want to do it. So there are tools in the toolbox, but, uh, you know, the kind of thing you specifically asked for, I don't believe so. But you're you're not going to let them use the term live work lightly. They, they, they can't just sort of finesse their way through. You're, 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 you have... You have the ability to say you still have to meet the guidelines. If you're if you're turning this into a high street, a shopping high street, then it's got to be that. You're not going to let them just sort of fudge their way through saying live work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair.
just reminding both deputants and, and counselors that this is really just authorizing the scheduling of a community consultation. <sighs> okay, Councillor Carroll, you're, you're muted. Yeah, so so can we vote? I had only one question and I got my answer. So Oh, I'm go ahead sorry. I thought you wanted I thought you wanted to speak. Okay. All those in favor? Sorry to interrupt. Uh oh, we have quorum. <laughs> okay. Um all those in Stay favor? Stay away. Oh. <laughs> Opposed that is carried. Um, now, uh, Councillor Cole, you made a request to, to jump to item 11, which is actually a timed item. Do you know what you want to do on this? It's a. Um, Chair, it's did, a Mr. Chair, I think you, Mr. Chair, I think you only took one vote there. Do we are we voting on five and six? Well, then I misunderstood. I didn't know. I didn't think you would combine the items. Um, so we take two votes. Can we vote on six? Yes. Um, just just for clarity's sake, um, all the speakers are satisfied that they've spoken on uh, Laird Drive. And there's no speakers out there that um, is speaking at 134 Laird Drive. No? Okay. I guess we've given that enough time. All right, uh, Councillor Carroll, you wanted to move the recommendations on number six? Sure. Okay, um, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Now, uh, Councillor Cole, you had asked, and it is a time item for 10 a.m., it's a demolition at um, a number of addresses, Wenderly uh, and Marley. Uh, what would you like to do with this? I don't see any deputants. Councillor Cole? Item 11, it's a demolition application. I think we're having sound problems, Mr. Chair, because he is unmuted, but we're not hearing him. It Could, could it be an AirPod problem? Or? Councillor Cole? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Councillor Carroll? And uh, we're just not hearing Councillor Cole. Maybe take off his earphones and try uh, plain sound. Yeah, um, yeah, Councillor Cole, maybe take off the earphones. I still can't well, hear you. Oh, there, there he you is. Are. Okay. So while we've got you, do, did you want to deal with um, item 11, demolition application? Yes, I'd like to move uh, recommendation one by staff to refuse the application to demolish the single family dwellings uh, because there is no permit to replace the buildings on the site. Okay, so that's exactly it. There is no uh, construction uh, permit uh, and uh, so therefore uh, uh, I move uh, refusal number one. Okay, um, there's a, a motion on the floor. Uh, all those in favor of moving uh, ref refu refusal recommendation? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Um, Councillor Cole, can you deal with um, item 14? It's an encroachment appeal, 484 Edlington Avenue West. It's also a timed item. And I don't see any deputants for this item. Councillor Cole? I trouble. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, which uh, item is that again? It's 14, it's an encroachment appeal. For yeah. 484 Eglinton Avenue uh, West. Uh, yes, uh, I'll uh, move approval. Okay, uh, recommendation uh, number one is uh, moved uh, with conditions. There's a whole bunch of conditions here. Uh, yeah, with, with the conditions. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. 
Um, now there is another timed item here for a fence exemption. Let me just see if there's any deputants on this. There is a there is there is a there is a deputation for um, 1915, and I don't have any direction from Councillor Robinson's office on what she'd like to do with this. Um, uh, is a, is there a Joe uh, Isopo there here here? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so there's there's a there's serious, serious echo. echo. I feel like I'm in the mountains. So suppresses mute button. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm looking, uh, looking for Joe Isopo. Yeah, he's here. Okay, great. Um, okay, so thank you. Thank you for, for joining Hello. us for you five minutes. Five minutes. Yes, I, um, my name is Joe Isopo. I'm representing the, the customer on uh, 2691 Bayview. We are the one that did the work. Uh, we've been around for about 30 years or so. Uh, basically, I'm asking uh, council if they could please consider the application for the fence exemption. Having said that, uh, we kind of stopped when, I, we, when we got the notice. We didn't finish the landscaping or anything around it. Right now, it looks really not completed in a sense. Uh, all I'm saying is, if you can at least consider, uh, uh, we're we did pretty well what we always do around the same areas in North York and whatnot. We've been doing this kind of work, like I said, for for a while, and uh, we'll leave it up to you to consider. Uh, uh, our application. <clears throat> That's basically it, Council. Questions for the deputy? Sorry. Any questions for the deputy? I have questions. I have a question. Staff. I have a question, the deputy. Uh, deputy uh, Mayor. Deputy Mayor. So, so you've been around, been around 30, 30 years, years yes? Yes. Yeah, longer than that, but the, the actual uh, uh, installation of uh, uh, custom customized fence and, and panels of uh, wrought iron, we've been doing it for yeah, about so, three yeah, years. So, and this and fence this is fence over a meter, meter high than the bylaw allows, 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 right? right? Yeah, it, it is, but what I, uh, over the years, we've uh, you usually apply for variance. Uh, pick, uh, it's, it's been uh, no issue for the longest time. But uh, the knee wall is only 40 inches. It's the 30 inch of see-through that's on top of it that is beyond. As yeah, so my, question, my, question, my question is, Mr. Chair, the guy's the guy been around for 30 around years. He, knew, he must have known he, he was breaking the bottle. the bottle. Didn't you? Didn't you? So I, I can't hear very well on, on, on this phone. Well, did but you know you were breaking you the bylaw? Bylaw. bylaw? You've been around for 30 years. You should know the lay of the land. Yes, we've been doing the same ones, and nobody nobody ever had any issues in uh, with the town. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I can give right, you various right, addresses right. that we've thank done. You, thank That's you, thank you. So, uh, all I can tell you is on the right side of the property, there's a, a, a privacy fence in wood in the six feet. Uh, on the left side is a, a old wrought iron that's uh, in, in the same uh, variance. But, uh, yes, uh, the... The panels are higher; they're six feet actually, and the the, the last thirty six inch is uh, see through. So uh, I don't know um, how else um, I should explain this. Mr. Sobo, you, you built this fence? fence? Yes. Uh, you're in the you're fence, in fence construction, construction business? business. Yes, we've been doing uh, fence components for forty years overall. And when you and built, when this, you built, did you know that it didn't conform to our bylaw? Our bylaw? Uh, I'm having a difficult time on this phone. I can't hear. Uh, yeah. Did, did you, you, did you, on, did, did, did you know, you know it, it was against oh, oh, Hold on a minute. Sorry, hold on. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So we're just, so we're we're just, just wondering just whether wondering you knew when you built it that it was against bylaw. 
No, we didn't know. We uh, we went according to all the other uh, uh, heights that we've been building for the last 20 years, and no, no, we never had issues. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. um okay. okay. Any, Any questions? Other questions? Other questions? Deputy. Deputy. Any, any questions? questions, questions. For, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much, you very much, much Mr. Sobo. Um, um, any other any questions for staff? Questions for staff. Carroll? Councilor Carroll? Yes, thank you. So the uh, um, looking at the, the chart, I always struggle with this a little bit. Looking at the chart of the, the implications here, um, the, 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 the challenge to the policy here, am I reading it right when I when I see the deficiency here is the solid cement material, um, that's one. But but also also that it's it's pretty close to the sidewalk. It's supposed to be set back further. Are those two main considerations? Good morning, uh, through you, Hi. Mr. Chair. Hi. Good morning. Uh, so there's a couple of things that need to be considered here. So there's a portion of that fence um, that is actually residing on city property, but the yes. issues at hand with municipal licensing and standards are strictly on the private, on the private side. So there's two issues, the height and also the construction. So because it's within 2.4 meters of a lot line, the uh, construction has to be open, open construction. You have to be able to see through it completely. Right. And then there's the height restriction of it being in a front yard. Now, right. the, third, the third component, which I, we couldn't address in, in the staff report other than to mention it, was the fact that there's a portion of it that resides on city property, uh, for which was um, addressed with our colleagues in transportation services. And if it was to be approved, then they wouldn't require an encroachment agreement. I did do a follow-up this morning to see if there was an encroachment agreement and to my understanding, no, there has not been one applied for. Um, and further to that, my understanding from my colleagues in transportation services is that it does present a sight line obstruction. So in all likelihood, it would not be um, accepted. Okay. I hope and that clarifies. It does. It's, it's very helpful. Um, now, uh, Mr. Pozo also speaks to having installed these before and not had a problem. And we have allowed variances in the bridle path area, in the, the area uh, off of Bayview. Is part of the issue here that we're talking about on Bayview, it's a front yard on Bayview, because I go up and down I, on Google Maps using the 3D attachment. I go up and down both sides of the street, and where we have we have uh, allowed uh, uh, fence variances, Drake's fence is the most famous example. But where we've allowed these things, it's never been out here on Bayview, which is essentially a highway. Is that is the highway the the other issue that that they're they're putting this front yard fence, dense construction? on a major road like that? Um, that would not be an issue with municipal licensing and standards. It would be, there would be no difference if it was on on a side street or on a principal street, where I think yeah. the answer would, would be more appropriate would be with my colleagues in transportation services, because it is a principal street and there is the potential of a sight line obstruction for uh, pedestrians and vehicles. Right, and so my last question, Ms. Mr. Chair, is when we do do variances, when I go up and down the street, it would appear that council has been very consistent where if, if they have been applied for, um, uh, we've been very consistent in that if you're off the main road, there have been variances from time to time on higher wrought iron, uh, um, dense construction like this provided it's set back. We, we've made all sorts of conditions and variances, but never on Bayview. If we were to say yes to this one, have we now set a precedent that, that 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 challenges us every time we would receive another variance on Bayview Avenue, given that we've been so consistent? And even E.P. Taylor Mansion doesn't even have a dense uh, construction fence like this. Would we be opening ourselves up if we start down that road on Bayview? Sorry, Councillor, would that be through me? 
question. Yeah, yeah. Are we are we opening ourselves up to a challenge if we allow this variance on an avenue where we haven't thus far? I, I went up and down the street, 3D Google mapping, all the way down to EP Taylor and back up to the 401. We haven't done this on Bayview. If we do this one, are we going down a road that's going to be a problem for us? I don't know that I can answer that question. Uh, I, we would have to look at every case individually and the reason we bring it to the council is so that ultimately you have the the decision couldn't say for sure okay. it has the potential okay. exactly okay thank you uh you can put me up to speak uh, mr chair uh yeah um just very quickly for for staff uh, so i've looked over these photographs here and if we um turn down the um application do they have to take a jackhammer to this thing it's a it's like a berlin wall here i mean it's quite attractive um uh, but that's a that's a major structure uh there um but they have to tear the whole thing down is that is that what we're dealing with here Uh, so, Mr. Chair, there's again, there's two issues at hand. Uh, we wouldn't tell them how to repair it other than what to conform to the bylaw. But the other portion is, again, the fact that part, part of it resides on city property. So they would have to look into an encroachment agreement with transportation services. And again, I'm not sure that they would get be able to obtain one, given that there's potential for sight line obstructions. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, I must admit, I feel guilty doing this to a homeowner. I mean, that is, I, I hope everyone's seen these photographs. It is a, it is a major concrete wrought iron fence. Um, and should we give them the chance of um, applying for an encroachment agreement? I'm surprised they haven't already. Um, okay, I'll leave it up to committee. Um, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, any other questions for staff? Any speakers? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Carroll. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, will move the uh, the first recommendation that uh, that uh, uh, we have, which is to refuse the the application for the fence. You've you've heard the the, the number of issues, and uh, this is what happens when we do allow a variance uh, that right next door is a wood fence that that had to go through. And I wasn't really in favor of that one either. And because it because of the way uh, we have held such a beautiful tree lined landscape on Bayview Avenue, it's it's been a major promenade in in North York for many, many years. Even even the E.P. Taylor mansion, uh, you know, throughout my childhood, had nothing but a low white picket fence um, and and even that was set back appropriately so that it wasn't on city property and it was basically there to hold in the horses so uh, the the fact that we have hung on to that principle until that wood fence next door to this one went in it just goes to show you when you go down this road you you lose it all and this is a cement structure right up to the sidewalk uh, yes, they need an encroachment agreement. If you read the report, they've already been told that, uh, that they've got to deal with transportation and get an encroachment agreement to have that cement structure on there. But uh, they're likely not to get it. We, we, we can't, it's one thing to have a, a, a movable, you know, or, or sectionable uh, wood fence or even a wrought iron fence that you can see through, but to put a cement structure right on top of the public easement, uh, if you need in there, if you need access for any reason, if they have a water issue in their own property, uh, we can't help them on our public easement. So even the, to give the, to grant the encroachment they will eventually apply for, it would be, uh, would be uh, doubtful. Um, I'm moving refuse the application for an exemption because I, I really think we've got to hold on to what we have in Bayview Avenue. It, it is the jewel of, of North York promenade avenues, avenues and, and we really ought to try and keep it. That's an avenue that's being 
intensified with with high-end townhouses where even though we we didn't even want that but at least even those new construction townhouses are having some respect for the frontage and i think we have to hold on to that this type of fence has had variances provided on the bridal path on old post on on roads like that on on high point park lane circle but not on Bayview Avenue, and for good reason. And so, uh, I hope the uh, councillors will will vote for my motion that we that we go with recommendation number one, refuse the application. Any other speakers? Any questions to the mover? All right, well, um, that's what's before us. Um, so all those in favor of uh, refusing the application? Opposed? That's carried. Okay. Um, I can dispose of an item I just wanted to deal with safety review short term improvements update. Um, 198. Um, I don't see any deputants on the matter. Um, any questions? I don't have questions for staff. Um, I'm just going to make a few comments on it. And and then it's done. Any questions for staff? No. So um, this this was um, uh, triggered by um, a terrible accident at the corner of Calvington and Keel, uh, in which uh, two two sisters were crossing the street northbound, and a and a left turning vehicle uh, struck them both. And one one was uh, killed, and the uh, the driver did not remain uh, at the scene. So uh, I just wanted to thank staff for their quick response uh, to this. I went to the corner and, and looked around, and it's really hard to figure out what you know what possibly uh, we can do because it's a signalized intersection. It's well well signed, uh, well lit, but there are some things that staff did. Um, identify which which went beyond uh, the, the call of duty and I wanted to uh, thank them for working on this so quickly in making sure that the uh, intersection is extra safe and uh, and that um, and I think there's some more long-term uh, initiatives that we're doing uh, too so um, once again my heart goes out to the families who were affected by this um, it was a um, it was just a, a terrible collision, um, but I want to thank staff for them responding responding so quickly to this and putting in these safety measures so the chances of it ever happening again um, are greatly reduced. And that completes my comments. Uh, so I will move um, I will move receipt on this because it's before us just for information. Uh, these actions have been implemented already. So all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. So I think we can go to the new items. Um, so this um, number 19, um, just for clarity's sake, this is my item. Any questions for staff? Just a signage change for cycling. Um, I can just speak very briefly uh, on, on this. Um, if you're driving north or south on Yeomans as you reach Shepherd, uh, there's one of those arrows with a line through it. So no vehicles uh, can actually go into the uh, the neighborhoods there. They must turn left or right. Uh, we had a request recently um, from cyclists uh, that that cyclists be allowed to uh, traverse that uh, the north south uh, direction on on Yeomans. Um, Yeomans and Bryant. So this is a signage change, and I would move the staff recommendations. Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Chair. We did actually send you an amendment on this item. 
should be in your email. We can display it on the screen if you'd like. It's just Please, with respect yeah, to the delegation. Oh, uh, was it a technical amendment? Correct. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll move the um, I'll move the staff recommendations. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Uh, uh, Bridge Ro Blue Ridge Road closure of cul-de-sac. Uh, Councillor Carroll, uh, any uh, questions? For no, no questions. I just wanted to speak to it. I don't know if you yeah, have questions. Yeah. So, um, any other questions to staff uh, by any of the members of council? No. Uh, speakers, Councillor Carroll. Uh, yes, just uh, quickly, Mr. Speaker, this is this is really a request for for study. It gives staff direction. Uh, we we have a we have a, a dead end cul de sac that's that's it's it's a very blind spot that goes around behind some houses and then gives access to the ravine, and it it has over time turned into somewhat of a nocturnal playground. Um, but all this motion does is give staff direction. It's going to take some study to figure out how to trim that cul-de-sac and take away the blind spot that, that police are having trouble monitoring. Uh, and so I want to make sure that staff have direction to do that work, not just have me hounding them to do something that isn't in our, our work plan. So uh, uh, there'll be a report back when, when we come up with the result that is actually a staff recommendation. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Carroll. Um, any other speakers on the item? No? Um, all those in favor of the recommendation? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Uh, ended? Crescent, one hour parking, um, Councillor Cole. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, no, you're coming in loud and clear. I don't know how to change my earphones. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is just a, a change of a, uh, just a 50 meters or whatever, a small uh, bit of uh, parking area, 100 meters, uh, just to change the parking, allow parking for uh, local uh, businesses on Marley on the corner there. Okay. Um, any other speakers on the item? No? Okay. Um, all in favor of the recommendations? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. And I have um, remove parking area um, sight lines at 3018 Young Street. Um, that is the last new item. That is also Councillor Cole. Uh, any questions for staff on this item? No. Any speakers? Yeah, just briefly. This is uh, on Young, uh, south of Lawrence, uh, where there's a problem of obstruction of sight lines as uh, SUVs and the bigger vehicles come in and out of the apartment building. Uh, so they've asked to make it safe. So staff has recommended this change to uh, make the access and egress to this apartment building safer. Okay, great. Um, thanks very much. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, I believe that concludes um, our business for today. I'd like to um, enact the bylaws. If you want to do any committee members have them to. They will be on the screen momentarily if a member would like to move them. Okay, great. I'll move them, James. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor. Did you see it? Yes, I'm happy to move them. Uh, that yeah. Arthur Community Council pass and declares a bylaw, bills 921 to 926, prepared for the November 4th, 2020 meeting 19 of the Community Council. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. That it? There should be one more. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to do that one too. I'll, do, I'll do. Okay, okay, go ahead. <laughs> the North York Community Council pass and declares a bylaw. Confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings. 
with the North York Community Council acting under designated authority at meeting 19 on November 4th, 2020. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. So uh, that concludes our business for today. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Clerks. Thanks, James. Thank you, staff. Um, everyone, yes, thanks, staff. Watch the, the U.S. Uh, election returns and enjoy the rest of the day and be safe. Thank you, everybody.